Yeah, I mean, I think uh, two weeks after the classes have begin, be, uh, begun, you should know which meeting to join. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so please join the right meeting. OK, so we'll begin. So the last time we were discussing about, uh, we discussed a bit about determinants, and then we started discussing about norms. And today we'll discuss uh, several properties of norms. Um, so, uh, yeah, so today we'll discuss several properties of norms. Uh, recall so that we have this right starting point. Recall that uh, uh, something is a norm provided um, for any X and Y belonging to this vector space V over which the norm is defined. The norm of any vector X is greater than or equal to zero, and it's equal to zero if and only if X is zero. It has the homogeneity property, naming, namely that the norm of C times X is equal to the magnitude of C times the norm of X for every C in this field F. And finally, the triangle inequality, norm of X plus Y is less than or equal to norm X plus norm Y. If uh, property three is not satisfied, then we call it a pre-norm. And if property one A is not satisfied, then we call it a semi-norm. <clears throat> Also recall the definition of an inner product. The inner product is defined like this. Uh, if it's defined from two points, you have to choose two points in V, and then it maps those two points to the field F. So given any X, Y, and Z belonging to V, the inner product of X with itself is non-negative, and the inner product is equal to zero if and only if X is equal to zero. The inner product is additive, so if you have x plus y comma z, then that is x comma z plus y comma z. And it is homogeneous in uh, the first argument, namely that cx z inner product is the same as c times x z for every c in the field F. And uh, it's also Hermitian. If you exchange the order, you do inner product of y x, you get the complex conjugate of the inner product between x and y. So um, also we saw one crucial property that if uh, this some dot comma dot is an inner product, then uh, x comma x power half, the inner product of x with itself power half is a vector norm on v. So that's one crucial property that connects inner products to norms. So using any inner product, you can define a norm. Now, uh, today we'll start by discussing some uh, example norms. These are perhaps the most popular norms that are used in, in, in different applications. Uh, the most popular norm is the Euclidean norm, which is also known as the L2 norm or more simply as the two norm. Uh, it's just the sum of the squares of the entries of x raised to the power half. So uh, one, uh, one important uh, uh, simple formula is that norm x square, uh, this is called the L2 norm. So L2 norm of x equal to x transpose x. It's a very useful formula. And it gives you an algebraic way of writing the, this particular uh, Euclidean norm. Uh, the Euclidean norm of x, uh, the norm of x minus y, uh, L2 norm of x minus y measures the Euclidean distance between x and y, meaning the our conventional notion of length between x and y. The second norm I want to discuss is what is known as the L1 norm or the sum norm. And this is also known as the taxicab norm or the Manhattan norm. So this uh, the, the Manhattan area of New York is uh, famous for having perfectly rectangular, uh, the streets divided into perfectly rectangular grids. And so this essentially measures if you're given a point A and a point B, you have to go, um, it's like this grid you see in the background here. So if you have a point here and another point here, 
the the way you can go from this point to this point, you can go like this or you can take a and go like this. But however you go, the total distance you will traverse is actually the same as long as you're you are going along the sides of this grid. <clears throat> and that is uh, basically this uh, sum norm. Uh, so it is equal to. It's written as norm X L1. And it is equal to mod X1 plus mod X2 plus etc plus mod Xn. The sum of the magnitudes of the entries in X. So a small exercise for you is to verify that uh, this is in fact a vector norm. That means it must satisfy those four properties that we discussed just now. And uh, another property is that it is not derived from an inner product. <clears throat> the third norm is uh, what is known as the max norm. Or the L infinity norm. This is also called the Cartesian norm. And this is written as X infinity. And the reason for the subscripts will be obvious in a second. It's the max of. So it's the max magnitude entries of X, the largest magnitude entry in X. That is the norm. Um, so one thing is that if you I mean, if you think about it, these are all different ways of measuring the length of a vector and uh, taking the sum of the squares and taking to the power half is one way to measure the length of a vector. And in a two dimensional space, if I draw a vector. Say like this, then the length of the vector is actually this squared plus this squared power half. We are just using Pythagoras theorem to say that's the length of this vector. And uh, so it, it's a reasonable way of measuring the length of a vector. Similarly, the L1 norm, it so measuring the length you have to travel if you were restricted to go along the sides. And the L infinity norm <clears throat> essentially picks off the biggest entry in X in magnitude. And uh, that's also, um, I can't uh, give you an example of how that will be the length, but uh, the, uh, but it's, uh, you can imagine that uh, maybe the cost is completely dominated by the largest segment uh, in one of the dimensions that you need to traverse and therefore that is the L infinity norm. Um, however, for example, if I took the min here, the min of the magnitude entries of X, that is not a norm. Um, can anybody think why?
so is the second one uh, where we are taking the min is it uh, due to the second property of positivity in the sense yeah. that uh, and that, that is one uh, you can also show that um, it, it yeah so certainly positivity doesn't hold if any one entry is zero then the this star is going to be uh, equal to zero yeah. and uh, so it won't be zero only if the if all the entries are zero um, uh, you can also probably show that it does not satisfy the triangle inequality. Um, that's also easy to show. So similarly, this uh, when P is less than 1, this definition of LP norm, it does not satisfy the triangle inequality. Uh, so show this. Okay, show. So the triangle inequality for the LP norm um, for P greater than or equal to 1, it, uh, it basically reads um, norm X plus Y LP is less than or equal to norm X P plus norm Y P. Again, it's something to think about how you show this. For any p greater than or equal to 1, if you define the LP norm like this, then it satisfies this triangle inequality. And this inequality is called Minkowski's inequality. Okay. Um, So here in this uh, inequality, if I substitute in this uh, definition of LP norm, if I substitute P equals one, then it is mod XI power one whole power one. And so that reduces to the sum norm. And if I take P very, very, very large, then what happens is that when I'm taking mod XI to a very large power uh, and I'm adding them up across all the XI's, the largest magnitude of a magnitude entry in the vector x will completely dominate the sum and therefore the uh, this uh, the the value of the sum is equal to as p tends to infinity the value of the sum will be equal to the magnitude of the largest entry of x raised to the power p and then i'm taking it to the power 1 over p so i this will le lead to the largest entry in magnitude in x as the LP norm as P tends to infinity. And that's the reason for this notation. Norm X infinity equals the maximum of these entries. So this P norm, it reduces uh, also when P equals true, it's the sum of the squares of the magnitudes of X, uh, the entries of X raised to the power half, which is exactly the same as the Euclidean norm. So this is a generalization that includes the L1 norm, L infinity norm and L2 norm as its uh, special cases. So now also to just get a feel for how these norms um, look like, one can ask what is the, what is the, so you can look at a two dimensional space and ask what is the locus of points that have a fixed norm. So if I take the L2 norm, um, if I take the set of points V such that norm V L2 equals 1 on the two-dimensional plane, what will it look like? Circle. It's a circle. So assume that this is a circle and its radius will be equal to 1. And uh, if I take the set of points such that um, v such that norm v infinity equals 1. So the norm is now the largest entry. And so um, basically, the, that, what will that look like? If you are fleet footed, you can think about it. Square. Square. Exactly. So that will look like a square.
So for, for any point along this line here, the uh, largest, uh, so whatever the value of y, the value of x is equal to 1. And so, so this is 1 and this is 1. Okay, and uh, this is the origin. Uh, and uh, for any point along this line, the x value is equal to 1. And so uh, the infinity norm of any point along this line is equal to 1. Similarly, any point along this line, the L infinity norm is 1, like that. So that's how you get the square. And finally, if I take all the v's such that L1 norm of v equals 1, what shape will I get? A line. I'll get a, I mean, I'll just Four call point. It, yeah, I'll get a diamond. I'll just call it a diamond for simplicity. And uh, these are points. This is point 1, comma 0. And this is 0, comma 1. This is the origin. So for any point along this line, uh, the sum of these two uh, coordinates is always equal to 1. And so that's how you get this diamond shape. So that's kind of the shape of these norms. And if I take um, the L3 norm or L4 norm, that will be like a circle that is further bulged out. It will end up looking a bit like this. So it's not quite a circle. It's bulged out compared to a circle. So I'm trying to draw it a little more bulged out. So this could be like the So that's how these will look. OK. Now, what are norms good for? Uh, there are several things that they're good for. Um, so I'll just give some examples. So one very important use is uh, for showing convergence. So um, basically, for example, we know this formula that um, uh, if I take um, 1 minus x inverse or 1 over 1 minus x, and I can write this as 1 plus x plus x squared plus etc. It's an infinite series. Now, when is this true? X less than 1 x infinity x to the power infinity tends to zero Limit exactly. x. so x uh, mod x should be less than one and that is the magnitude of x should be less than one so uh, this is true for a scalar but suppose i wanted to find identity minus a matrix a inverse and so when can i write it as i plus a plus a squared plus etc. Now, obviously this, this condition here suggests that maybe we should, we need a condition on, um, uh, on uh, somehow the size of this matrix A. And uh, the answer is that this is true if a matrix norm on A, which I'm going to write with three lines. So going forward, I will use three lines to denote matrix norms. And uh, I, I need to tell you in what, which norm I will use here. And it turns out that uh, any matrix norm will do. And if, if, you, if you can find a matrix norm under which the norm of A is less than one, then a formula like this can be used to compute the inverse of I minus A. And the other use is uh, if you know that mod X is less than one, you can actually bound how much, how big the rest of the series will be. And in turn, you can determine how many terms you need to use in the summation in order to get a sufficiently accurate um, estimate of 1 minus x inverse. And similarly, the norm of A will tell us um, how many terms I need to include in this series in order to get a sufficiently accurate uh, representation of I minus A inverse. And so, in, 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 in a more general sense, it's useful for determining how many iterations of an iterative algorithm you need to use um, 
to solve a certain problem to a desired uh, level of accuracy. And in fact, uh, the second use is more about quantifying the accuracy of comp matrix computations. And, and uh, these are again things that we are going to look at later in the course when we look at uh, stability of uh, matrix computations. So um, suppose we want to find A inverse, but uh, instead um, the, the, the entries of A are noisy and so what we get to see um, is uh, so suppose uh, so so, we, so suppose suppose a was equal to a naught plus e, and so what we've done is we've gone and computed a inverse, but what we really want is a zero inverse. Then we want to know what is the potential error that we've incurred by computing a inverse. So to find the error in computing A inverse, which is A0 plus E inverse, instead of A0 inverse. And again, the uh, answer lies in the norms. And the third use is in bounding. Eigenvalues or perturbations of eigenvalues So if you if you perturb a matrix by adding a small error matrix to it, how much will the eigenvalues get perturbed? And uh, all of these the answers lie in norms. So this is also something that we are going to see later in the course. Now um, another thing is that we've seen a few kinds of norms, but the question is, can we can we come up with new norms based on existing norms that we know. And uh, so, for example, um, so uh, these are, these are uh, you can do that, and these ex exploit some, some properties uh, which are known as algebraic properties of norms. And I'll give two examples here. So, um, the first is that if um, say x alpha and uh, x beta are, are, are vector norms, then if I define norm x to be equal to the max of these two numbers, then this is a vector norm. Again, a property that is easy to verify. OK, but you have to check that it satisfies those four properties of norms. Similarly, if um, this is a vector norm, say on C to the N, and t in c to the n cross n is non-singular. It's a non-singular n cross n matrix. Then if I define this So we'll call it the T norm. This is equal to the norm of Tx 
then for any x belonging to c to the n is a vector norm. So you can produce lots of different norms. For example, you have a set of norms. Uh, you can take the max of any pair of them or any number of them. Then you get another vector norm. Take any matrix T in C to the n cross n that's non-singular. Then the norm of Tx gives you yet another norm. Obviously, the length of Tx is going to be the different, different from the norm of x. So. in general. OK, so in particular, for example, if I'm taking the Euclidean norm and if T is a unitary matrix, then uh, X T will be equal to norm of X, but otherwise it need not be equal. Uh, so. Um, yeah. So. So we can produce lots of different norms like this, but the question, another question is uh, where do we use these different norms? Uh, in particular, the yeah, go ahead. Do do orthogonal uh, orthogonal matrices only preserve uh, Euclidean norms or every norm? What do you think? Every norm. No, orthogonal no? matrices pre okay, uh, preserve okay. uh, orthonormal matrices. Yeah, okay. orthonormal matrices. Will they, they preserve, preserve, norm? preserve Euclidean norm only? And uh, the reason is very simple. Because it is designed to be inner product, right? Right. Uh, inner product, in fact, uh, what we call the usual inner product. So if yeah, I write right. this square, it is equal to x transpose x. So which implies if t is orthonormal, then if I compute tx, this is going to be Tx transpose, so this is bad notation, so this is Tx transpose Tx, which is equal to x transpose T transpose Tx, and T transpose T is the identity matrix for uh, no orthonormal matrix. And so this is equal to x transpose x, which is equal to x to square. But for other norms, you can't write it like this. And so it's not true that it preserves um, other norms. So you can in fact ask, uh, are there classes of matrices that preserve, for example, the L1 norm or that preserve the uh, L infinity norm? And uh, in general, it's hard to find matrices that will uh, I mean, you can always find a matrix that will preserve the L1 norm or L infinity norm for a particular vector. But for any X, you cannot preserve its L1 norm or L infinity norm by multiplying it by, uh, by an N cross N matrix. So that's again something that you can try to show.